Hey guys, and welcome back to CAD class, where in this class, we're going to be creating a headphone stand out of sheet metal in the Autodesk Fusion Sheet Metal Workspace. The Sheet Metal Workspace is one of the most underrated spaces in CAD. And in this video, we're going to be creating a headphone stand in Fusion and then sending it out so we can get it made in real life. This class is Sheet Metal Project 1 of 2, and in a few more weeks, we're gonna be releasing more projects about the Sheet Metal Workspace. So make sure you guys are subscribed. Because this is a sheet metal project, we're teaming up with the best guys in the biz for making sheet metal parts, send, cut, send. And if you guys are in the Make community or you've ever seen an episode of BattleBots, then you know their name very well. Here at CAD Class, we have a very simple policy. We will not talk positively about a company unless we truly believe in them. And when it comes to send, cut, send, that is absolutely the case. Both Josh and I have dozens of maker friends that have used send, cut, send for years, and they've always had a solid reputation. As a CAD class viewer, you guys can follow the link in the description below to get 15% off your next send, cut, send order. So go ahead and make some awesome stuff because we want to see it. All right, guys, let's get started on our first sheet metal project. So go ahead and launch Fusion and let's get started. All right, guys, to get started, I've gone ahead and started out with a blank Fusion file, which we have named Headphone Stand. Now, currently, if we take a look in the top left corner of our screen, we are in the solid workspace. We want to go ahead and click on Sheet Metal. Now, the first thing you'll notice is all of the categories in our toolbar looks absolutely identical, and you are correct. But as soon as you dig into the Create and the Modify menus, you'll notice that quite a lot of tools has been taken away and very specific sheet metal tools have been added. So it's a much simpler workspace, but it gives us a lot more flexibility with the creation of all of our projects. Now, the difficulty in learning the sheet metal workspace is not learning a bunch of brand new tools from scratch, but actually understanding the logic that goes into creating a sheet metal part, because it's very different from how you create a solid CAD part. But for this project, we're gonna be taking it nice and slowly, working on a very simple project. And we'll get started by clicking on the Create Sketch button and starting a new sketch on the right plane. And I'm gonna be typing L for line and then making five lines. And this is gonna end up being the side profile of our headphone stand. I don't need to make any more lines, so I can hit Escape. And this sketch only requires one constraint. So I'm gonna add on the midpoint constraint between our bottom horizontal line and the origin. You guys can go ahead and pause your screen right now so you can see all of the dimensions and degrees that you need to fully define this sketch. As soon as it's good to go, we can click the green check mark to finish our sketch, and then the little house icon next to our view cube to get an isometric view. The first thing that we need to do in the sheet metal workspace is to define what material are we using and what thickness, because that's going to be driving a bunch of the manufacturing information like bending or any corner conditions. Now we can do that by going into the modify menu and clicking on Sheet Metal Rules. This is gonna open up a little dialog box with some default materials like steel or stainless steel. But what I want you guys to do is hover your cursor over the bottom aluminum, and then click on this little button that's got a plus symbol. This is going to be starting a brand new rule or a new thickness of material. Now for this project, we've chosen an eight inch thick 5052 aluminum. This is effectively a very soft metal, so we can get really nice consistent bends for this entire project. But what I want to do here is first off rename this material. We're going to be renaming it aluminum and then an eighth of an inch. The thickness is going to be set to millimeters, so we just need to change it over to 3.2. Then we can go ahead and click save. And as you can see, I have used this material before, so I've just got it on my page, even though it won't be on yours but we can go ahead and close this and then continue on to the next step of our project, which is actually giving it some three dimensionality. And in the sheet metal tool, that is always going to be using the flange tool that you can find right here at the top of the create menu. Now, what we're going to be doing is effectively doing a profile extrusion. I'm going to be clicking on this profile and then I can set how far is it actually moving. And for us, I want to change the direction from one-sided to symmetric. And then I'm going to be changing the distance to 40. This is going to be giving us a total width of 80 millimeters. But as you can see right here at the bottom where it says sheet metal rule, it's currently set to the default steel. So I'm going to be clicking on this little pull down menu and going all the way to the bottom and clicking on our aluminum eighth inch. Then as soon as we click okay, 
It's now importing the correct material with the correct thickness. Now, the purpose of this video is not just to show you guys where the sheet metal tools are, but to get you comfortable with the idea of having your projects be made by someone else. As a lifelong maker, I get it. There is this impulse to think that you have to create every single part of your project or else it doesn't count. But honestly, it's just not true. If your project requires a crazy expensive tool or a really niche manufacturing process, then let someone else do that for you so that you guys can focus on the bits of the project that do excite you. Now, I know a lot of you guys are going to be coming here from the 3D printer world, and I totally understand that when your main tool is a 3D printer, all of your problems looks like they can be solved with a 3D print, but that's not always the case. Sometimes a different material, metal or otherwise, may actually be the best tool for the job. All right, back to Fusion. Next up, I want to refine the design of our headphone stand just a little bit. Currently, it's looking just a little bit blocky and rectangular, and it just doesn't look very good. So instead, I'm going to be tapering it upwards just a little bit to give it a little bit more of a pyramid design. So the first thing that we need to do is actually say, I want to do a cutout, but that means that I actually have to fold this sheet metal part flat, make my cutouts and then refold it. So I'm going to go into the modify menu and I'm going to click on unfold. It's going to be asking me, which is the stationary face? Well, that's going to be this top face right here. And then it flattens out the rest of the project. As soon as you check unfold all bends. Then we can click OK, and now our part is in a 2D configuration. And this is where we can make a brand new sketch on the top face of our project. It's currently tall. I want it to be rotated a little bit. So I'll move over to the view cube and click this little left arrow. There we go. That's a little bit more easy to see. Now I'm going to go ahead and type L for line because I want to make a triangular cutout on this left hand side and then mirror it to the other side. So I'm going to be putting my cursor right here on this little top edge right there and then clicking over to the leftmost edge and then effectively just making a triangle. That way we can have a perfect triangular cutout. This is going to be very easy to dimension. We just want to say that the vertical edge of this triangle is 20 millimeters. Very easy. But then I want to mirror this about a vertical edge. So I'm going to type L for line and then X to turn it into a construction geometry. Click on the origin, move vertically upwards, and then click on the midpoint of that top edge. Perfect. Now I want to go into the mirror function, and I want to mirror our triangle profile about this vertical construction edge. So I'm going to be double clicking on any edge of our triangle, which is going to be highlighting all three edges. Select mirror line in our dialog box, and then click on this vertical construction line. And as you can see, it gives us a nice little preview. But the only thing that we really care about on this right side is this little sliver right here. Now, one thing that I do want to add onto this design is a slot cutout on the back edge that we can pass a USB-C cable through the back. So let's go ahead and incorporate that into our design now. I'm going to go into create, slot, and then center to center slot, also known as a C2C slot. And I'm going to be zooming in a little bit and then clicking, moving horizontally over, clicking again, moving upwards and then clicking the last time. But as you can see, the outer edge of my slot is dashed and orange, which means I accidentally kept my construction geometry turned on. So let's go ahead and fix that first. I don't need to make any more slots so I can hit escape. Then I can double click on any edge of our slot, go into our sketch palette. And as you can see, the line type is set to construction. So as soon as I click that, it reverses our slot back to a normal sketch. Perfect. Now let's add on some constraints. I want to add on a coincident constraint between the center line of the slot and the origin. As soon as I do that, you can see it drops down. So that center line is always pointing towards the origin. Now we can add in some dimensions. I'm going to type D for dimension, and we can say that the center to center distance of our slot is going to be six millimeters. The diameter or the width of our slot is also going to be six millimeters. And then I want to say that the distance between this arc and this edge right here is going to be four millimeters. And if you checked out our last video, you know that we can dimension this using our tangent tool. So I'm going to be having my cursor over this right arc, right clicking and selecting pick circle at arc tangent. 
Now I can click on the arc and that edge, and it's now dimensioning to the arc, not the center point of that arc. As I said before, we're going to be keeping this as four millimeters. We can hit enter, and then this sketch is all done. With everything in the sketch fully defined, we can go ahead and click the green check mark to return back to our 3D workspace. And anytime you're going in between a 2D and a 3D workspace, always want to click the house icon. There we go. Now I want to extrude cut both of our triangular profiles and the slot cutout all the way through our part. So I'm going to type E for extrude, and we can just click on all of the profiles that make up both of our triangles even this little skinny sliver right here, and then our slot as well. Perfect. We can set the distance type to all, and because our arrow is pointing upwards and there is nothing above it, I have to click flip so it cuts all the way through our part. Lovely. We can click OK, and I actually want to mirror this cut about our right plane, so it gets cut on the other side as well. So we can go into Create, Mirror, our object type, I want it to be set to features, and then go down into our timeline and click on the most recent extrusion. There we go. Now we can click select next to mirror plane, and I'm going to be clicking on the right plane. That should give us a nice little preview of that triangular cutout at the top and the bottom. Perfect. And with that mirror operation, we are now all done with our features that we need to make onto our headphone stand whilst in its flat 2D orientation. Now I'm going to go up to our toolbar and I'm going to click on refold faces. And now we can see it is refolded all of those bends with the angled cutouts that we made in the 2D workspace. Now, because this is a project that I actually want to hold in my hand without having any sharp corners on it that dig into my fingers or into my delicate electronics, I want to go ahead and round over all of those sharp edges so everything is nice and smooth. And if we take a look at our project, you can see that we've got four sharp corners, two at the top and two at the bottom. So I'm going to zoom in and type F for fillet, and I'm going to be clicking on the thickness edges. These two at the top and then two at the bottom. And because we want this to be nice and rounded, we're going to be setting all four of these edges to 10 millimeters. And as soon as we click OK, we have now got a finished headphone stand. And with that, our headphone stand project is all done. Now we can export this file, give it over to SendCut Send, have them manufacture it, and then ship it over to us. To get started, we need to flatten out our headphone stand. So I'm going to go into the Create menu, go down to the very bottom and click on Create Flat Pattern. I can click on any flat face on this project, really doesn't make a difference. Click OK. And this is going to be flattening out our project in a very similar way to the unfold tool. But as you can see, it's added a bunch of information about where those bends need to take place. And what we're going to be doing is exporting this as a DXF. That is a very, very simple 2D vector graphic. Then we can click OK, making sure that our units match the units that we designed our project in. Click OK, and we can rename this file something like headphone stand DXF, and then the thickness of the material. We can go ahead and save it to our desktop, and then go over to sendcutsend.com. You can see all of the different projects that I've been working on. Uh, I will eventually put out the R2D2 video. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and upload this file from our desktop. There we go. Let that load for a second, and then we can go ahead and select all of our material. First, we want to confirm this is the right size, 500 millimeters by 90. Perfect. Click confirm, where we can select our material. We're going to go into metals, aluminum, and we chose 5052 aluminum. Perfect. Now it's asking us for the thickness. Well, we chose an eighth of an inch or 3.2 millimeters. There we can click next. And we actually want to have them do the bending for us. So I'm going to click on bending, and as you can see, when I hover my cursor over any of the four bends that it's identifying in this DXF, it will highlight all of those. So this top one, I want to be making this 100 degrees. This one near the very top is going to be 60, but I want to be changing it over to down. Then these other two right here, we're going to be setting this to 80. 
And then finally, the last one, 100. And if we get a sideways view, oh, I actually want this to be leaning over a little bit more. So that one, we're going to be tweaking over to 100. And then this top one is going to be 80. There we go. Now this top and bottom edge is totally parallel and everything looks perfect. Now we can go ahead and click next. Keep deburring, let them take off all those sharp corners for you and then click add to cart. After a couple of days, I got my send cut send package with all of my goodies in it. And as always, they look fantastic. And even though I only ordered one, they actually sent me a second one as well. And after talking with their manufacturing team for a little bit, they did say that they sometimes make two parts just to verify that all of the bends are absolutely perfect. And apparently I just got the bonus one. Because I got two of them, I wanted to finish them off in slightly different ways. The second one I hit with a pretty basic metal white paint, just so it matched some of the elements within my office. But this first one, I wanted to make it a little bit more classic with this brushed metal effect. And I think it turned out really fantastic. All right, guys, that wraps up our first sheet metal project. And if you found this helpful, go ahead and subscribe so you can see all of the other fusion tips, tricks, and projects coming down the line. And if you want to learn more about the other workspaces within Autodesk Fusion, then you can check out our Mastering Autodesk Fusion book over on Amazon. Or if you want to get an ebook, you can find it over at cadclass.org for free or for a completely no pressure donation. And if video courses are a little bit more your speed, then you can check out the Mastering Autodesk Fusion course that follows along with the book step by step. And you can also find a 25% off discount code in the description below. Drop a comment down below and let us know what sheet metal project you want us to work on next. And as always, let us know what project you're working on. Thanks for watching guys, and we'll see you in the next one.